G.I. Joburg is the code name for South Africa's daring, highly trained review force. Their purpose? To offer reviews and information on the finest G.I. Joe toys from the past and present. Today we take a look at the Cobra Bug. Fully amphibious and specially designed to operate in the unique topography surrounding Cobra Island. She is purpose built to blow attacking landing craft out of the water and pick off any successful landing parties with ease. She is armed with a devastating array of 50 caliber guns, one aft gunner position with dual barrels, and two forward automated positions. With two more dual turrets up front, the bug is able to engage multiple targets from every conceivable direction. For sinking enemy vessels, the bug carries a pair of Strike VT-60 torpedoes. Two gas turbine engines propel this beast through the water. And six non-clogging, heavy-duty wheels grind up the coast. Crew by five, there is additional capacity behind the gunner's position for a pair of Cobra Frogmen. Two more divers can ride atop the engine nacelles. The pilot and co-pilot are seated in tandem on the port side. The starboard crew section forms a detachable two-man scout pod. Simply lift the tab and pull the pod forward to deploy. Crew are secured with seat belts. There is superb molded detail representing instruments for all positions, but nothing resembling a control column. The side doors conceal two rocket-firing jet skis and some terrific engine detail beneath the molded grille. The Scout pod was featured in the commercial to be capable of flight. I am personally in favour with this idea, as then the mounted guns can better be brought to bear on targets. It's like a two-seater aquatic Cobra flight pod. The European catalogue image also hints at this attribute. Similarly, the image and the box art suggests that the jet skis are also hover skis which can fly. This would help explain the rocket armament, as rockets fired at wavetop level from a jet ski would be a very bad idea. The bug's debut was in issue 76 of Marvel Comics' A Real American Hero Run. A pair of them patrolling the Cobra Island coast were destroyed by the Joe's X-19 stealth jet. But their appearance is hinted at a few issues earlier where reconnaissance photos of Cobra Island reveal the tracks of what the Joes refer to as tracked submarines. Bizarrely, the bug features as a boss battle in the Sahara level of the 1991 G.I. Joe video game by Taxan. The player is on foot and somehow keeps pace with the bug as it races over the desert terrain. The bug defends itself with its rear guns, hover skis and a grenade throwing crewman in the front compartment. The prototype version had red tinted glass sections instead of clear. This would mesh well with Cobra vessels released in recent memory such as the Mumbo and Night Raven, but clear glass makes more sense for a submarine. The use of yellow is more evocative of a commercial submersible, and it's easy to see where the designers were going with its choice. Not terribly practical for a military vehicle, but it is an attractive pairing of colours nevertheless. Note that the front end of the vehicle has a very low clearance, and the weapons will snag on all but the flattest, smoothest terrain. Being a submersible, the toy neither sinks nor floats. It tends to list and slowly take on water. This is forgivable. It was not designed to be a functioning water toy, and if you wanted your bug to come to rest on the bottom of your pool, a pair of weights in the jet ski compartments would ensure this. But I think you'd agree. It's a bit too dramatic to be a realistic dive action. A bug sacrifices armor in favor of functionality. It's clearly not a frontline assault vehicle. But submerged in a body of water, it can be a devastating ambush vehicle. This is something that the bug's dedicated operator, Sector Viper, excels in. Sector Vipers are essentially guard dogs. Their training pertains to the maintenance of security around Cobra Island specifically. They are each assigned a patrol sector and are expected to know every detail of its topography, fauna and flora. In addition to this, they are well versed in the amphibious landing craft in use by the armies of the world and know their strengths and weaknesses. These boys aren't popular. As security guards, the highlight of their day is typically sneaking up on off-duty vipers and checking up on them. Dicks. 
But the Sector Viper's enthusiasm and attention to detail quickly becomes an asset when Cobra Island comes under attack. They are the first line of defense. They hold the line. The figure comes with a very stylized aquatic gun and a goldfish bowl style helmet. Note that this is a Sector Viper from my childhood. His dome has long since disappeared, but very adequately replaced by a similar accessory from the Star Brigade Destra figure from 1993. This bizarre aquatic tank may be unwieldy and far-fetched, but who cares? It's one of the most fun toys I've ever owned, and it really shines if you find some water to play in. Have you ever wondered why the number 27 appears on the mass-produced bug? Well, according to my rough calculations, there are approximately 27 kilometers of coastline on Cobra Island. That means there's a bug for every kilometer. Good luck with that, Joes. One oddity really stands out, though. The bug has a tow hook. What trailer on earth could possibly go where this baby goes? We hope you enjoyed G.I. Joburg's review of the Cobra Bug. Subscribe to catch the next one. And feel free to comment. We'd love to hear from you. Yo, Joe!